It's the last day in May and the end of child month, but government will continue to do all it can to offer care and protection to the nation's children. We have a real-life example coming up. We'll feature a former ward of the state who has been making a worthwhile contribution to society. Plus, important tips on immunization. And later, one child takes us out the road to find out what parents can do to ensure their children's safety when using the internet. Welcome to the show. I'm Adrian Atkinson. The package unfolds right now. <laughs> Good day, I'm Lorraine Mendez and this is your JIS News for Tuesday, May 31. Effective today, May 31, the Bank of Jamaica has reduced the rate for its 30-day certificate of deposit from 5.25 to 5%. The 30-day certificate of deposit is the benchmark for other interest rates and lending facilities linked to this policy rate should fall by a similar 0.25 percentage points. The adjustment reflects the central bank's assessment that the inflation outlook for fiscal year 2016-2017 will continue to be favorable. Looking forward, the bank's policy stance will be geared towards maintaining low inflation as our contribution to the foundation for higher GDP growth in Jamaica. The bank's inflation target for fiscal year 2016-17 has been lowered or set at a lower rate than last year, and that is 4.5% to 6.5%. The BOJ governor was speaking at the bank's recent quarterly press briefing. He said the inflation target was based on the assumption that international commodity prices would gradually increase and that there would be continued improvements in domestic demand. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has announced a four-point work policy towards full employment for all Jamaicans. Dubbed LEGS, the policy will provide learning, which is compulsory education and apprenticeship, earning through an employment program, giving through volunteer work, and saving for retirement. The government must provide the opportunities for all Jamaicans by virtue of their stage in their life cycle to be actively engaged in a productive activity that would help them with their health, their earnings, their savings, and their need to give back. Prime Minister Holness says the program is currently being fine-tuned and should move towards the consultation phase in the coming weeks. He was speaking on Friday at the opening of the 2016 Jamaica Employers Federation Convention held at the Montego Bay Convention Center in St. James. While addressing the JEF convention, the Prime Minister also announced that government was prioritizing the rollout of a human resource management information system. He said it was part of plans to eliminate waste and increase efficiency of the over 130,000 public sector workers. You would have gotten significant benefits. You would have removed redundancies that are caused by duplications, errors in your own documentation, um, just the ease of the administration of your staff would save you significantly. And this is one way in which we could reduce our wage to GDP without removing even one person, even one job from the public sector. Just by ensuring that A, all persons who work for the government are properly documented. 
Instructions have been given for the Jamaica Defence Force to make talented members available to serve on government boards. Prime Minister Andrew Holness gave the directives on the weekend as he addressed the 49th Victoria Cross Dinner at Up Park Camp. If we are going to advance the national security, we will have to utilize our army in the advance of our economic and social security. Indeed, we can't separate the national security from our economic and social security. Mr. Holness added that he would be convening meetings of the National Security Council and the Defense Board to discuss a range of development plans. When connected, then the bird moves to where we have had the traditional deficit implementation. And that is where we have to now figure out how do we utilize not just the minds, the creativity, the solutions which we can all jointly come up with, but how do we utilize the talent here for implementation? Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett and his director are now in Japan as part of efforts to re-engage the market in that country. According to the minister, two decades ago, Jamaica received upwards of 20,000 Japanese visitors per annum, but that has since declined to roughly 2,000 per annum due to a long economic slowdown in Japan and other factors. Minister Bartlett says he's hoping to tap into the over 17 million Japanese who travel overseas annually. He will also speak at the World Tourism Organization's Conference on Tourism and Technology, which is being held in Nara, Japan on June 2. The team left the island on Sunday and will return on June 6. And finally, the Creative Production and Training Center, CPTC, has relaunched and rebranded its cable channel to share content devoted to Jamaican stories and experiences. Jam Vision is now up and running on Flow Channel 116 and Digicel Play Channel 18. It has been lauded by Culture Minister Olivia Grange. While addressing last Thursday's launch at the CPTC studio, she said Jam Vision would play a great role in strengthening the cultural identity of our people and serve as a vehicle to share more of our stories abroad. Our cultural agreements with friendly countries have spaces for the exchange of content and partnerships in the creative industry, such as in the area of film. These are avenues that CPT CPTC must now engage to ensure that elsewhere in South Africa, Cuba, Colombia, etc., our images are shared in light of the global attraction to and the taste for Jamaican creative products and services. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Lorraine Mendez. Thank you for watching. Wait, hold on. Colin, hey, what's going on? You know, sir, I'm on my way to go look about the farm work program. Aye, I'm mean, love to do the farm work program there you now. But remember, I mean, serve a five year prison sentence for a minor crime. They can clear it, you know? Yes, Colin can get his record expunged. Expungement is having a conviction removed from your criminal record after certain specifications have been met. Visit the Criminal and Civil Justice Division in the Ministry of Justice for more information. Last Tuesday, we introduced you to a Thoy Neal, a former female ward of the state who is now a marketing assistant. Today, we are featuring another former ward of the state who resided at the Maxfield Park Children's Home. Through support from the Child Development Agency, he is now proud to be called an overcomer. Stay Hi, my name is Duane Haynes, a former ward of the state and currently a second year student at the University of the West Indies, Mona Campus. I ended up becoming a ward of the state because my mother became mentally ill shortly after I was born. I ended up on the streets and from there the police came and took me to the Maxine Park Children's Home where I stayed for the first eight years of my life until my grandfather became aware that I was in the Maxifal Children's Home and came and took me as a foster child. Being a foster child meant that I was in the direct care of a parent or guardian or somebody who the state vested their trust and interest in. But at the same time, I was still 
under the ambit of the state per se. Some of the challenges that I faced while being at the Maxfield Park Children's Home included not being around family, not really having that close bond with persons in particular. At present, um, I'm kind of having those challenges, but it has improved drastically since I ended up being with my grandfather, who, though at the time he was past the age legally to adopt or to foster a child. It was a really good tenure. It was a really good experience being in charge of the student body, making critical decisions, at times intervening in certain matters as it relates to student school relationship, school administration relationship. It was really good. Persons did not know I was a ward of the states, nor did they know that I had challenges growing up because my grandfather always instilled in me that you must always carry yourself in such a manner that you blend in, but at the same time you stand out. So persons don't need to judge you on that basis that you are a ward of the state or you are a bit less fortunate than others. They need to judge you based on the characteristics which you display to the world. And that's what I took. About a month or so before my tenure as head boy was about to end, I wasn't thinking about university any at all because I was looking at my circumstances which would have prevented me from pursuing a higher level of education. However, the Child Development Agency again intervened and they sought scholarships for me, in particular the Kojo Scholarship, Children of Jamaica Foundation Scholarship which is an overseas-based diaspora scholarship. It was from there that I initially started the University of the West Indies pursuing a degree in law. But due to financial challenges, I ended up switching to management studies. I have no regrets because this doesn't stop my dream of achieving and becoming the best that I can be. We have a couple of programs because it's in our strategic objective at the CDA. So the youngsters we have in place from they are about 15 to 18, we ramp up what we call the permanency planning, which would aid them to have a smooth transition, re-socialization into the wider society. We have children going to university, going to nursing school, you know, medical school, and other um, vocational school also that we support. We have youngsters who have been awarded for their academic achievement and we have got scholarships for them um, from a number of private sector organizations and that has had aided them in um, completing their studies. So they are doing well academically. We have to make sure that they also do well vocationally and ready for the world. My ultimate dream is to become the Prime Minister, but in the next couple of years, leading up to that, I plan on working in the public sector to give back meaningfully to the holistic growth of Jamaica. Because for me, I see that there is need for active youth participation in government policies, direction, etc. My advice to each and every ward of the state is to not accept mediocre. We must always look ahead and say somebody else is worse off than me. So what am I going to do with the opportunities which come my way? Take those opportunities, get involved, be more extrovert. It's a bit hard in light of the fact that you are faced with adverse challenges, challenges such as rejection and so forth, but we can do it. I'm in the process of completing my degree and fulfilling my dreams. You can too. Yet, still I'm
Immunization is important. It protects both children and adults from some illnesses and diseases. In today's HealthWise, we turn the spotlight on the topic. Jamaica's lightning speed far supersedes the tracks. From as early as its birth in 1962, the country has placed as its priority the delivery of adequate healthcare services. Of note is its outstanding immunization program. There is now a very high chance that your child will be protected against infectious, disabling and oftentimes life-threatening diseases if he or she is fully immunized. Jamaica has been successful in eliminating a number of vaccine-preventable diseases. In 2011, the country achieved a 100% coverage for tuberculosis, 92% for poliomyelitis, diphtheria, pertussis or whooping cough, tetanus or lockjaw, hepatitis B and haemophilus influenza type B, and 88% coverage for measles, mumps and rubella, MMR. Globally, vaccine-preventable diseases still account for some 3 to 4 million deaths per year, and about 80% of these occur in children under 5 years of age. Luckily for us in Jamaica, through the success of the immunization program and improved coverage, we hardly see any of these vaccine-preventable diseases here. This magnanimous achievement took intense efforts from the Ministry of Health. In fact, the transformation began in September 1977 when the expanded program on immunization, EPI, was established in Jamaica. What the expanded program of immunization has done over the last 30 to 40 years has transformed the health of our young children. Whereas we had epidemics of polio, measles, rubella, congenital rubella syndrome, and other childhood infections, by having high levels of coverage using the standard vaccines that we give in our health services, we've been able to prevent these childhood diseases. So we do have a lot to be proud of. One merely has to step back in time to the early 1950s to understand the strides made in ensuring that every child is fully immunized. Then, paralytic cases of polio reached epidemic proportions in Jamaica. Few or no children under the age of four were immunized. In 1954, the attack rate was about 174 per 100,000. There were subsequent outbreaks in 1957, 1960, 1964, and 1982. One of the things that came home to everybody um, was that it was a wake-up call that we had to implement a, a full the, um, established immunization program as part of our maternal and child health program. And so we began the process of building on that epidemic to systematically develop um, the program of immunization. The epidemic in retrospect was a blessing in disguise because every negative must produce a positive so the outcomes have been good. With the introduction of the salt vaccine the effects of polio became less lethal and there has been no record of the disease in Jamaica since 1982. Before Jamaica implemented the expanded program on immunization in 1977, we used to have a lot of childhood deaths. For every thousand newborns each year, about a hundred of them would die, mainly from infectious diseases, including those like polio, measles, diphtheria, tetanus, diseases that can be prevented by vaccinations. However, since the implementation of the EPI program, and the establishment of routine immunization in children under the age of seven. Infectious diseases, in particular the vaccine-preventable diseases, are no longer as common as they used to be before the immunization program was established. Jamaica's record in immunization is recognized internationally. 
In 2011, Jamaica was awarded the Pan American Health Organization's Henry C. Smith Immunization Award. The award is given to the Caribbean country that has made the most improvement in its EPI for that year. We're very proud of the fact that Jamaica got this award in 2011 for showing significant progress with respect to the vaccination program. The significant reduction in infant and child mortality points to the Ministry of Health's stance in propagating holistic health island-wide. Universal immunization coverage is well within our grasp. If you want to learn more about the immunization program in Jamaica, contact the Ministry of Health at 967-110024 or visit their website, moh.gov.jm. You may also visit any health center or public hospital close to you. Your doctor's office could also answer your questions about immunization. Let's face it, when it comes to maneuvering the tablets, computers and phones, as well as state-of-the-art technology, this generation, take the cake. They are familiar with everything. They even know more than me as an adult. While we're happy with the progress, we also have to be careful as there are many dangers lurking online. What can parents do? Dominic poses the question in this special Child Month edition of Outer Road. I'm Dominique Boudou, and today I'll be asking a few persons how children can be safe when using social media and the internet. Social media is absolutely of the utmost importance for parents to put um, all the parental locks that they can put on a child's device. Um, I definitely believe that we need to limit the use of technology for our children these days. But the most important thing is for parents to stay involved. Tell them say I evil. Don't keep it away from them but monitor it so if there's a device at home you have the password they know when you know when they can use it because you put the password you give it to them you check behind it making sure that you know they're on the right sites or whatever put cord where they cannot broke it as long as they can broke those cord because even a three-year-old can open a phone right now because my three-year-year-old is and, that, and I never teach him nothing like that. But as soon as my daughter put on her phone, him open it. So all you have to do, put devices on it where they can broke it. Send out more information about how to keep how children can keep safe by not sending out personal information on social media. Well, from once a child is underage, you have to protect them from the social media because a whole lot of thing gone widespread. So you just have to do the correct thing. I hope you have received some ideas on how you can ensure that your children are safe when using social media and the internet. Thanks for watching. Jamaica is sporting Mecca from track and field to football cricket, and more. Our progress, though, is predicated on proper training and sporting infrastructure. One local institution, the G.C. Foster College, has been doing just that for years. Find out more in this next feature. Conditioning the body and mind. Contributing to holistic development. This can be your experience at the GC Foster College of Physical Education and Sport, the only institution of its kind in the English-speaking Caribbean. There was a growing need to establish an institution, a training institution, 
to educate and train teachers of physical education and sport and coaches. GC Foster not only fulfilled the mandate locally, but we are now reaching international countries. We are not just known as the home of world-class coaches, but we're producing world-class athletes as well. The institution uses state-of-the-art equipment, including a new 400 meters track donated by the Sport Development Foundation and international comparable training techniques and technology to teach the importance of physical literacy and sport, opening doors for careers in multiple fields, from event management, massage therapy to fitness instruction. The institution offers various levels of education, from certificate to postgraduate. There are quite a few programs that we do offer that you'd call uh, not necessarily conventional programs. We try to get the students optimally rounded so they can introduce different sporting activities to the students when they go out in the world of work. Students are given the opportunity to hone and shape what is learned in theory through practical exercises in the various facilities provided for multiple sporting disciplines. For the past 36 years, the GC Foster College of Physical Education and Sport, with its well-trained staff, has been providing Jamaica and the world with physical education and sports specialists. GC Foster laid the foundation for a scientific understanding of the sports science and its various disciplines, track and field, football, volleyball, basketball, and so on. It also laid the foundation for emotional support in terms of understanding human behavior, learning how to um, deal with situations that are quite common to group dynamics. The college facilitated my preparation as a referee because of the numerous seals, so I use it to train to keep up my fitness level. It's not very easy over here, but it basically helps you to become a mentally and physically tough person. Nothing in life comes easy, and you have to work whatever it is that you want. They have given me the platform to train and education and to work. So I'm really grateful for the opportunity that they have blessed me with. At the GC Foster College of Physical Education and Sport, you can find your place on the field, track, court, in the pool, ring, over the table, across the net, or at the front of the class. The GC Foster College of Physical Education and Sport, a world-class training institution. We've come to the end of another edition of Jamaica Magazine. Keep abreast of all our offerings by visiting our website, jis.gov.jm. And yes, JIS website is kid approved, so children, be sure to check it out. You may also keep up to date with the latest information through our social media platforms and share your comments by sending an email to jamaicamagazine at jis.gov.jm. I'm Adrian Atkinson. Thank you for watching and let us continue to make children's safety a priority. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.